There's quite a few pages in the calendar left to turn, until Formula 1's plans for a powertrain overhaul for 2026 come to pass, but it's undoubtedly worth thinking about now. As motorsport moves towards a crossroads, F1 must choose its own fate and consider its place in the wider automotive world, which is due its own seismic shift within the next 20 years. The plan remains for Formula 1 to introduce completely sustainable fuels for the 2026 season, in its efforts to become far more relevant to changes within the automotive industry. In short, that means that the fuel is going to be derived from biological sources and developed by the petrochemicals companies involved within the championship to ensure that its performance points meet the demands of the world's most powerful racing cars. F1 had already introduced E10 fuels for 2022, where 10% of the fuel mass is comprised of bioethanol. With that 10% comparatively underdeveloped to the remaining 90%, it produced an initial drop in efficacy. That's simply because ethanol has less energy within compared to a fossil fuel, and so the exothermic reaction under the combustion process would kick out less grunt, assuming a similar level of efficiency. What this doesn't mean, however, is that F1 will in 2026 simply switch to a fully bioethanol fuel and go from there. That would require a completely different fuel system to contend with the vastly different characteristics and also have considerably less energy density, meaning that power output is further diminished. The differences in properties would also have a knock-on effect for fuel systems, particularly as the fuel systems we have now are a standard spec component and the fuels used by each team vary. What F1 needs is a drop-in fuel, which can be used by a pre-existing engine build as a direct replacement for fossil fuels. And currently, there's two different variants currently having billions invested into them to satisfy the changing market. Biofuel or biogasoline is probably the most familiar to you, and the methods in producing them have advanced away from using food crops to form them. This is largely born from the necessity of not interrupting the global food chains, but non-food feedstocks such as bio-waste can have their plant sugars extracted and converted into hydrocarbons to produce a fuel. This is known as a second generation biofuel, as the first generation variants use crops like corn, soy and sugar to produce fuels. And this happens to be something that Formula 1 has already trialled at the end of 2020, in anticipation of introducing a fully sustainable fuel, and thus seems like the logical option for the championship to follow. However, car manufacturers are investing large sums of cash into e-fuels, which have become increasingly popular. These are purely synthetic fuels that employ waste carbon dioxide, hydrogen which can be sourced through the electrolysis of water, and electricity to produce the reaction between the two and produce the requisite hydrocarbon fuel. Like biogasoline, e-fuels can be dropped into an existing internal combustion engine and used normally. Where that electricity comes from is the biggest plot point of how sustainable the e-fuel is, and thus it should allow for e-fuel producers to build plants that operate on wind and solar power to deliver the requisite power without creating problems for their dreams of a zero carbon future. And here's the most pertinent point why e-fuels would be a likely source of energy for F1's next breed of cars. This year Porsche has invested $75 million in the Chilean company HIF Global which, in partnership with Porsche, Siemens and ExxonMobil, is building an e-fuel production plant in Punta Arenas. This plant will be operated on wind power, with Porsche expecting e-fuel production to begin there this year. The initial plan is to use those e-fuels in the Porsche Super Cup, and then continue developing those fuels for consumer use and beyond. It's no secret that both Porsche and Audi are on the cusp of agreeing to Formula 1's terms and conditions for 2026, and thus we have a link. Both VAG brands are likely to champion the use of e-fuels as a replacement for fossil fuels in F1 for 2026 and beyond, citing their position as, if you do the numbers, a carbon-neutral fuel. And that's theoretically possible if you're taking as much carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere as the fuels produce in combustion. But that doesn't quite sway environmentalists, who cite the low efficiency used to produce e-fuels from factory to car. The International Council on Clean Transportation states that the e-fuels production process is inherently inefficient, converting at best half the energy in the electricity into liquid or gaseous fuels. While the costs associated with setting up wind farms and solar arrays are dropping on year on year, this is still energy wasted. And therein lies the exact same problem in extracting hydrogen, that has inhibited the growth of the hydrogen electric car in the mainstream. Regardless, F1 is not yet going to give up on the internal combustion engine, and nor will the world. And that asks another question. Ahead of the British Grand Prix, Sebastian Vettel did a demonstration run on board his own Williams FW14B, running on a carbon-neutral biofuel. Theoretically, if the production of the fuel is indeed carbon-neutral and creates an equilibrium between the CO2 used and the CO2 emitted, you could be forgiven for thinking why hybrids are even necessary. Could F1 be carbon-neutral and run V10 engines again? In theory, yes. You could return to the iconic V10 noise 
and by ditching the hybrid components, reach for a fleet of F1 cars that are smaller and lighter, like they were in the early 2000s. But which manufacturers are going to fund that? It's no secret that the manufacturers involved in F1 are developing the hybrids there to have some degree of road relevance, and having a fully sustainable fuel won't stop them from developing them. After all, hybrids are more efficient and can reach nearly a thousand brake horsepower while using considerably less fuel. And would automotive manufacturers want to spend millions on research and development on a completely different engine formula? The reason for keeping the V6 turbo hybrid layout for 2026 is to keep continuity, rather than do something completely different. But nonetheless, it's certainly food for thought, and it all goes back to how F1 wants to define itself. Does it want to be the pinnacle of technological advancement and have both hybrids and sustainable fuels? Or does it want to return to its old image, even if that's now largely obsolete? F1 could bring back V10s, but it probably won't.